Okay, awesome. So this 32 flavors ice cream store is is pretty open ended. Um, I, the the point of confusion that I'll touch on first, um, which I think is really a flaw in in when I designed this assignment for this week, um, is kind of how to handle inventory and, and sales because I left it open ended. But I also said, hey, keep it simple and do buckets of ice cream and boxes of ice cream cones. Um, and then I I didn't really give any advice or guidance about how to track sales. And I think this understandably um, has caused some confusion because to sort of jump to, um, it's, uh, yeah, let's just use this. Can everyone see this okay in terms of size? Okay. So let's make this just uh, inventory sales. Um, and I'll just get rid of Actually, let me let me just do it here because I'm a little more familiar with this one and I'm going to screw it up with the other one because I'm not as used to it. So kind of, I, I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll demo like going through the design process a bit later. Um, but just to dig into this specifically with sales, you know, what we're used to is, all right, sales, we've got a primary key. Let's maybe just add like a date. Uh, I'll just call it like a timestamp for no other reason. Um, and maybe like quantity. Um, and that can be an integer. And so this part, I think, is relatively straightforward, right? Something is sold, an amount of stuff is sold. Uh, the interesting questions come into like what was sold and and the cost right and the question is like should this be tracked in here or should this be tracked really in a separate uh really this would be a, a products table and this is where I think the uh sort of hints I gave around inventory with like boxes of ice cream cones and stuff are kind of confusing because you can have like boxes of ice cream cones and like, or buckets of ice cream cones and buckets of ice cream and pockets of blah. Anyway, I think you see where all I'm going. Buckets of cones and boxes, lots of stuff, but sales is like one ice cream cone, right? Or like one cone in a sugar cone or something. So inventory is kind of separate from products. Right. Like you can think of it as if we're a restaurant, our inventory might be, you know, whole chickens, but we don't sell whole chickens. We sell dishes. So I'm going to just kind of put aside inventory for the time being. Um, I left sales open on purpose. And and my thought was, well, if people want to, uh, there's no reason why we can't have. You know, this be. why our sales table couldn't just be like this and just we have duplication of stuff. And then in sort of the next iteration, we refine that. Um, I see that people have kind of moved on past that a bit. And my guess is where a lot of folks have been heading towards is essentially some sort of products table, right? Where we have like a description and we have, you know, a cost, per unit. And actually what I will just do is use Google Sheets. And let's just open up a sheet here because actually this I think is, let's actually just do it like this. Uh, you can go away and we'll keep you. It's a little too big. So, you know, we could do something like sales, ID, date, quantity, uh, 
or excuse me, let's uh, let's bring products in here. Products, uh, description, cost per unit. And this might look something like this, uh, waffle cone. Uh, cake cone. Um, and this is where it is more open ended. Maybe you know, listing all the flavors is probably not productive. Uh, though we could. Um. What might make a bit more sense is, you know, a uh, regular ice cream scoop, vegan scoop, and and so on. Um, so this is one way to build your your product stable. Um, if you want to, you could go a little nuts and create a like a flavors table, but I don't know if we need costs for them. Um, if you wanted to, you could have separate product tables for the cones and the ice cream scoops, but this is probably a pretty simple way to do it for now. Though this, I realize this doesn't have ice cream flavors, and I think that's maybe where my description of sort of how to do this in inventory was a bit off. Um, and in fact, we would, you know, maybe gluten free waffle cone, you know, is like a dollar more. Or something like that. And so here, this, we actually do run into problems with this because for a sale, how do I link these things? Right? Um, And we haven't seen that yet, how to do a join table. And the goal here was to keep it pretty simple. So it's because if I sell one scoop of ice cream I here, now I need to like have track that it's a waffle cone with like a regular ice cream scoop or like a vegan scoop. So there's a couple options here. Um, one is we could dramatically simplify this and do, you know, ice cream scoop waffle, uh, regular ice cream, waffle, vegan ice cream, waffle, and basically list out all our sort of like ice cream cone combinations here. Um, another way to do this, if I wanted to, would be ice cream, you know, scoop type and like own type and we've got you know cones types or something like that and another table um ice cream types and then for each of these there would be like an id a uh, description and a cost. And now let's see here, I have to make this a correct key relationship. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this is gonna be one I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, the ice cream type can be used for many sales. Each sale is going to have to have just one ice cream type in this in this scheme.
so I, I've thrown like inventory a little bit out the window here, but now this lets us get a little more specific with like listing ice cream flavors and listing all the different types of cones and their costs and putting them both in one sales and then having foreign key relationships from uh, a sales table. So this is not the worst way to do it. And um, I, I did leave this kind of open-ended on purpose um, to let people kind of go with different approaches, but maybe it was a little bit too much so. And I think the inventory bit was a bit confusing and I maybe should have had that been like a products list instead. Um, and, and the reason being, you know, if we have like a box of ice, a box of cones or like a bucket of ice cream, you can't really directly relate that to a sale. We're not like selling buckets of ice cream. It's more like this is what the store has in stock, but that's sort of a separate thing. So I just kind of want to pause here and see what questions people have because I've been jumping around a bit. Um, Andrew, your, your team in particular, I want to check in to see if this is kind of helpful with what you guys were digging into and trying to figure out. Uh, yeah, it's definitely helpful. Uh, I don't think I have any particular questions at this point. Uh, Josh, Josh or Fu, do you guys have any comments? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of went about the ice cream uh, problem the same way. I didn't make a separate inventory table i made a ice cream table and a cones table and um i didn't include like cost but i did have like is the is the like what is the flavor for the bucket of ice cream and um and is it gluten free and so same thing with cones what what uh what's the type of cone waffle sugar whatever and then i put um also another attribute Gluten free, like true, or false. Yeah, yeah, and that that is definitely a way to do it, and that is sort of what I was imagining with inventory was actually having like a table, like buckets of ice cream, and a table boxes of cones, but it wouldn't really connect to to sales yet. Um, but I think that's where like my problem design was maybe a little confusing. Um, and I want to check in with folks and see like what would be helpful because I know I jumped through a lot here. Um, would it be helpful for me to maybe dig into one part of this? Would it be helpful for me to start from the top with an entity relationship diagram or sort of talk through my original intent? Or are there other questions that that people have uh, that would be helpful to dig into with this with this assignment? I think the entity diagram, like the uh, ER one would help. I don't know if you went through, I missed the first part, but um, that one has been confusing me. Yeah. Totally. Um, and, and I think what I'll do is I'll kind of I'll 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 build that up, um, and I'll kind of speak on. I think I'll, I'll kind of follow what I put here, and then I'll kind of talk about I think where the assignment went wrong, but just so that we can have some some sanity. Um, and the other thing I want to pull up is the uh the sort of like steps of this and i think this will be useful to to see and i kind of figured we'd be doing this one way or another in the review uh whether it was me or someone else um can everyone see my screen okay with this split and read stuff okay awesome so the idea here is let's build the entity relationship diagram and then worry about the data um so it yeah, um, in fact, let me just open up Sublime Text just so I can get something right here. And let's start with this. So I just want to put all my stuff in one spot. And, and this is what I like to do, like when I'm working is I just like to get everything in one spot.
And um, let's grab the other part of this assignment right here. So this is, this seems like a lot of steps, right? But as we go through it, I think we're gonna find that it's not too bad. Because really a lot of this stuff is just writing stuff down in, in English and turning it, and then we turn it into a diagram. Um, And this stuff we can just that I don't need. So basically, we want to write just a bunch of sentences describing what we're doing here. Right. And what we want is if I'm gonna look at this problem, we've got an ice cream store. And the ice cream store has inventory. It's got buckets of ice cream. It's got boxes of cones. And we sell ice cream cones. Sell ice cream cones to customers. And I'll kind of walk through how I imagine this. And, and there will be some flaws here, I think, that you all will see, but it'll be helpful to see the process. Um, there are different flavors and kinds of ice cream cones and of ice cream and of cones. Right. Um, Employees and hours, employees work at a store and a store sells ice cream cones to customers. Employees log hours at the store. Um, And if I kind of keep going through this, I don't have different kinds of employees. Right now, I just want to keep it simple. There's one store location. Um, I sort of gave a hint here, and this is where I think it caused confusion. Uh, I said, let's just treat buckets of ice cream and boxes of cones as two separate entities. And I know that the other examples we saw don't do this with like one products table. Um, and here too, I think I needed to provide a little more specificity, but that was sort of my in intent was that let's just worry about buckets of ice cream as their own thing, boxes of cones. There's one store, people, people buy ice cream cones and there's really just one thing. And uh, there's one kind of employee and, and they log hours. Um, so to kind of go through this process, I've, I've just written down a couple like descriptions of stuff. Um, I could flesh this out some more, um, but this is a pretty good start. Uh, things I could add would be, uh, you know, the buckets of ice cream are of different flavors. The boxes of cones are of different kinds. Um, I really need to make a decision around pricing. And this is where I needed to, I think, give you all more guidance. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to decide that, let's say everything costs the same for now. Um, but let's start building up some, some entities, right? And we have a store. And can everyone see this okay? And we have a customer. And we have uh, employees, and really this should be plural, 
Uh, I'll make stores plural, even though there's only one store right now. Um, we have, and this is where I think I needed to design this assignment a bit better, but what I thought would simplify it was for our, for our inventory, let's just have buckets of ice cream and boxes of cones. Um, and so there's a little bit more here, but let me start building out some relationships. Employees work at the store. Uh, each employee only works at one store and a store has many employees. Uh, when employees work at the store, they fill out a timesheet. And, and I designed this problem, so obviously I'm going to be able to move through this faster. Uh, but this was sort of the, the original intent. So the idea here was employees log hours with a timesheet. And I'm going to say like each row here is like, you know, one shift or whatever. So employees will have like multiple timesheets and, um, and time, and then the time and, um, each timesheet though, I believe only belongs to one employee. If I have that right. And so We need a couple more relationships in here. The store has an inventory. Um, buckets of ice cream and each bucket of ice cream only belongs to one store, but the store has multiple buckets of ice cream and the store also has an inventory. Uh, boxes of ice cream cones. And again, I think the inventory piece it, is where I needed to redesign the assignment. So I think really that should have been more about like a products table so we can better connect it to, to sales. Um, but that, you know, um, that's something we can re revise and it's also why it's good to go over it now. So again, the store has a bunch of boxes of cones, each box of cones, it's really only in one store. Um, and customers buy ice cream from the store, right? So there's sort of a missing piece here. Um, I could add a relationship like customers purchase from store. Um, I could say that like a store sells ice cream cones to customers. And I believe this would be certainly a many, um, I'm not sure if it's one to many or many to one here, to be honest. But the piece that I think is missing here is we probably need a sales entity like, uh, And maybe what we want to do is we have customers buy the ice cream cones. And each ice cream cone can only belong to one customer uh, for the purposes of this diagram. And 
there's probably a better way to do this, but this at least is kind of starting to get us somewhere, right? Because we're starting to like identify some things. Um, there's probably other ways to do this, but this is not the worst entity relationship diagram to get things going. And, and again, I really hadn't thought through the, the product side of connecting inventory to sales, and, and I probably should have redesigned the assignment a bit. Um, but I just want to kind of check in here to see what questions people have. And it's kind of, if it's helpful to kind of see me building this. So what what's on uh, people's minds? Well, it's certainly helpful to see it yeah, being done. I can say that. And is it starting to make a little more sense as like a design tool and a design process for like a data model for a database? I think right now the diagrams are still making it a little more confusing for me, uh, but that might just be me having a harder time with diagrams. I did have a question for you though. Yeah. Um, with regards to the relationship, how do you decide what direction to have the relationship? So like here you have uh, stores and then work at and then employees. Why do you have it as work at instead of the store employees employees? Um, you could do either, to be honest. And it wouldn't make a difference. There probably is some sort of rule or standard for consistency. Um, and it probably it probably depends what you want to focus on in your data model. Like maybe we want everything to come from the store. Um, but notice that changing that doesn't actually affect like the nuts and bolts of this relationship. Like it's still a one to many. Um, but yeah, that's a really good question, Megan. And and to be honest, I did not go that deep into entity relationship diagrams. And I think either way is 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 fine. Um, so I, I hear that this may be a little more confusing than we had hoped. My hope was that actually doing this at a bit of, bit of a higher level would help with design. Um, and, and maybe that's not the case, but would, would people like to see me maybe turn this into like a, a data schema now with like the, um, with like draw SQL to see what it looks like as, as actual tables? Yes, please. Absolutely. Yes, please. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So I think that's a little, so let's grab this. And can everyone see this okay right now? Yes. Awesome. So I, you know, I'm skipping the step I encouraged everyone to do of like adding the attributes because I hear that this is a little confusing. Um, uh, what what ends up happening, like, is the attributes end up becoming columns on our table. You know, like hours worked like that's going to end up as a um as a column on our table but i think it's probably easier just to build the tables and add the columns in there and then maybe i'll just go back and add that stuff so um and give me one moment folks i need to very quickly shoot someone a message. Um, hold on one sec. OK. Everyone can see my screen with the entity diagram and draw SQL. Cool. So roughly speaking, entities turn into tables. It's not going to be exactly that, but it's going to be close. We've got a store. 
we've got, let's do the employees first. We've got employees. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to unzoom this a bit. And let me make this lowercase just for consistency. And let's let's build these two out just to see it, and then we can add the rest in. So employees need some information. So I'm going to set that those are sort of the primary keys. And let's add a column here. And let's just give the employees a name. Let's keep it simple. And I'm not even going to give the store anything else right now. Um, and we somehow need to track that the employees work at the store. Uh, if I try to put that on the store, that'll be a problem because there's lots of employees that work there. But right now, there's only one store and all the employees work there. So what I can actually do is, um, you know, uh, store ID. And I'll just make this works at store ID to make it even more explicit. And let's go ahead and draw a little foreign key relationship there. And let's update this. This should be uh, a one to many, or rather a many to one. Uh, each employee only works at one store, but the store has many employees. Um, and the employees log their hours with a timesheet. So let's create a timesheet. And it's got an ID that's going to be a key. We're going to need the employee ID. And we're going to need hours worked. And the employee ID is going to connect to there. And I believe, let's see, um, I think this is Let's see, I always, this one I always get a little confused on. ID, employee ID, hours worked. Um, I th think uh, one, two, this might be a, this might be a many to many. We'll have to figure that one out, but I don't think it blocks us from building out the, the table. Um, and let me, uh, let me maybe move this around a bit so it's a little easier to see. So let me go ahead, in fact, and bring up VS Code. Give me a sec here just to give me give me a sec, folks, just to uh, get VS code. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna just rip Postgres. I mean demos and notes. Perfect. Let's just make uh, 32 flavors. Um, and we're going to touch. And we're just going to call this init schema SQL. Let me go ahead and exit full screen here. And let me go ahead and just Build out these 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 tables that that we've designed with store and timesheet and employees. Uh, so create table store. I'm 
employees timesheet um, ID serial primary key and I should probably make sure I'm just going to use this as my reference code as I as I build this out um, and the employees just have a name right now, right? We're keeping it super simple. Um, and then they also have a store, a, a works at store ID. Uh, and I believe we do it like so. Let me make sure I got that right. And yeah, that looks about right. So that's this relationship right here between store and employees. Or to jump over to our entity relationship diagram, the store employs the employees, right? So these relationships in this entity relationship diagram usually are more about figuring out like our what our primary and foreign keys are. Normally, it's the entities that get turned into tables. Um, and a timesheet is going to have an ID. Whoop. It's going to have, I'm just going to give it like a date uh, for, for simplicity. We could use a timestamp type. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do date. I'm just going to do hours worked as an integer. There is like a decimal numeric type as well. Um, an employee ID is an integer that references employees ID. So I think this will work and let me create a bunch of timesheets um, for the same employee. And in fact, we should test this out by, by creating this and inserting some data. Um, so I might do that in a moment, but let me pause and check in and see what questions people have. And is it helpful to kind of see the connection between, all right, I'm like making this diagram and this is what it looks like turning this into SQL. Yes. Awesome. Definitely. Awesome. Um, so I think I will run this stuff to make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Let's actually create this database. Um, so I get, and if I do connection info, um, if I spell that right, so I'm just connected to the, the database for my user, which is not what we want. So we're going to create a database. Name 32 flavors. And I keep forgetting uh, Postgres does not like numbers in database names. It does not like dashes either, but it does like underscores. And it already exists. So let's drop it. And now let's create it again. And now let's connect to it. And you can do connect or just forward slash C. And now let's run this uh, init schema code that I just wrote. And it looks like I do have some syntax errors. And it's probably all these trailing commas, which I'm so used to doing from JavaScript. Um, I wish VS Code really should be giving us hints about that in the browser. I think if you like connect it to Postgres with a Postgres extension, it might, but that's a bit more work. Awesome. So now our tables are created. I can see them and they look like what they should. Now let's insert some data um, into store. And I don't even know if I need to 
put anything there. Um, I might be able to do. Yeah, this is a little bit of a trick. Default does um, things that Postgres will create for us, like the ID. And in fact, for the insert statement, you don't need to list, you know, the column names like that and so on. If you give them in order here as that they are here, but I think it's a little easier to make it explicit. Um, we could even just give the store a name for simplicity's sake. And, and in some ways that might make more sense, to be honest. Uh, but so now we've got a store and now let's create an employee. And I really should be putting this in an SQL file to make it easier to, to reproduce this, but that's okay for now. Um, so let's do works at store ID name values. And let me uh, just do a little screen managing. So there's only one store. So its primary key value will be one. And Alice is going to work at our store. I've got a store. I've got an employee. And I can do a, a join, though there's not a lot of interesting information there yet. Now let's make a timesheet. Um, employee ID, date, hours worked, values, employee number one. Um, there is definitely a Postgres function that we can use uh, that we'll see a bit more tomorrow to insert dates. Um, Postgres is actually pretty flexible with dates. Uh, what is relatively easy is if you just pass a date string like this, and this is specifically a date. Uh, there is a, a time one as well, and then there's timestamp, which combines the two. Um, and again, just for simplicity, I'm just doing just, just like that. And I believe this will work. Let's see if it does. Uh, does. Let's, in fact, now, yep. And in fact, let's insert that again. And we can have it be like that. So because I haven't put any rules on my timesheet, we can really do whatever we want. You know, and as we get more advanced, saying, you know, maybe we only want one timesheet per day. Though that doesn't quite make sense because you can work more than one shift. Um, so flexibility here is actually a bit of a benefit. We probably don't want zero hours worked and we wouldn't want like a million hours worked. Um, but now we've got an employee store, an hours worked, and I can um, do a, a join statement again if I want, you know, select name from, uh, let's do just like name, hours worked from employees, join timesheet on employee ID equals timesheet stock employee ID. And this probably needs to be employees. I need, a, and let's see. Missing uh, a little bit of a typo here, apparently. And let me simplify this a little bit just to fix this. And I don't want to spend too much time on this because I want to get back to the schema design. But just to make sure that stuff is working. Select start from employees. Uh, issue here is probably 
Well, one problem is certainly timesheet should be plural. Um, so I think I just have a syntax error in my join. And I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now, actually, because I wanna focus on the schema design. Um, but actually, let's see if I can go up to select star from store, join employees. Um, Oh, timesheet, I actually made it singular. So that is probably part of the problem. So that's my mistake. So I will say a common gotcha is like singular versus plural table names. Uh, try to just name all tables plural, which will take a little practice, but that's the convention and you're going to want to do it one way or the other. So I did goof up a little here. There we go. And so I can see like Alice's timesheet and tomorrow we'll learn how to like aggregate and put this stuff together. Um, So what would people like to see next in terms of building this out? Sales, inventory. I didn't really deal with products. Note that we don't really connect the sales to inventory at all. And that's, I think, maybe where like the assignment design was a little off. Um, and just to go back to attributes, table attributes, by the way, um, the attributes are, you know, we can, you can add all of these things like unique, multi-valued, optional, and sort of go to town. But the idea was to keep it relatively simple. Um, oh, and in fact, I already have that. Uh, because we want this to be um, a design tool. So just to help us, my hope was that this would help us think about things without getting into columns and rows and stuff. Uh, to be honest, if you all find working with tools like this with DrawSQL better, then I, I would say go for it. Um, but so you can sort of see how, you know, you can build these out. Um, so let me just pause here and, and see what questions do people have or what would people like to see me dig into or build out from, from this diagram and this assignment? Yeah, we can do sales. Sales. Does that sound good to folks? Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, okay. Adam, you, you are going kind of fast. Um, we're not supposed to be coding along to this, right? That was not my intent. No. Got it. Um, am I going too fast, though? I If so, I apologize. Um, should I slow down a bit? Sure. Okay. Cool. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I I I appreciate the need the feedback because sometimes I do lose track of the pace that I'm moving at, and also if folks aren't asking questions, I'm just sort of assuming that people are are absorbing it and it's making sense because, you know, I I have the Zoom grid open, uh, but I can only sort of tell so much over Zoom in terms of. Uh, what what's connecting and what's not without you know it's a little different than than a live classroom. So sales, there's a lot of ways to to tackle this one. Um, the simplest way Sales get an ID, they get a store ID, 
they get a date, they get a description, they get a quantity, they get the cost, right? And if I wanted to add attributes here, like the attributes would be things like ice cream flavor. Phone type. Um, I said to keep it simple, uh, so we're not going to worry about number of scoops. And then we would have this maybe quantity, like one scoop, two scoops, three scoops, or I'm sorry, like number of cones per order. Um, we could even get rid of that if we wanted like different line items for each individual order. Um, and then, you know, I could also have total cost. And again, I haven't been getting too fancy with the entity relationship diagrams. This is a good example of sort of what's called a derived value in that the total cost is we can get it by basically multiplying quantity by like whatever, you know, the price per whatever our pricing model is. And I left that deliberately open, but maybe that's where I needed to give a little more guidance for, for an introductory assignment. Um, so for sales, and in fact, let's make this even more specific. Uh, ice sales of ice cream cones, because we just have that one product, an ice cream cone with, with a scoop. Um, and this is where it does start to get more open-ended. Um, date, it's just gonna be a date. ID is our primary key. Store ID is a foreign key relationship. Each ice cream cone sale belongs to one store, but a store can have many sales. Um, description, in fact, I'll make this text because this could be bigger. And I'll, I'll show it uh, in Google Sheets sort of how I uh, imagine this to possibly be. And we'll just call this total cost. Um, and let me, Put that over there and bring up let's put this here. Let's put this here. So let's say now we've got sales, we've got ID. In fact, really we've gotten rid of this products. We haven't created that at all. Um, let's just do store ID and date and description and let's in fact change quantity to num ice cream cones. And again, this is where I left it open-ended. Well, let's say for simplicity's sake, everyone gets one scoop on your ice cream cone and that's an ice cream cone. And then total cost. So this is where we start to get more complexities. Uh, this part is relatively easy. You know, everything sold from one store. Date, also relatively easy. Description, you know, vegan, vanilla, ice cream, gluten-free waffle. Oh, uh, let me do a little text wrapping here. Right, so 
this is where the design choices start to come in and where it is more open-ended and where you all should be spending more time. And there's not necessarily one right answer. Um, inventory, by the way, again, I, I think I really should have switched that over to products a bit because it is kind of disconnected and I can see how that could cause confusion because, you know, buckets of ice cream and them having different flavors and boxes of cones with different types, uh, that's great. But then we can't really use that to sort of help structure our sales data more. Um, and so that's the piece that I think was really missing, like the, the products list. Um, and there are a number of ways to do this, but it's not uncommon to see this. You can search by string in, in through SQL columns, um, and that's often done. Um, Right. And so basically someone is like manually entering this information that gets stored in the database. And we don't really have a lot of structure here. Um, is this ideal? No. Is it workable? Yes. And is it reasonable for like a first simple implementation? Yeah, it's not too unreasonable. Um, and here's where it gets interesting in terms of design choices um, and where things start to expand. So let me just pause here. Uh, especially because I know I have been kind of tearing through this a bit and I, what's on people's minds and kind of what, what questions do people have? Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, what you're doing in draw SQL right now, is this also just an ERD as well, just a different, it just looks a little different or is this actually called like something uh, else? You know, it's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. Like if you go to this other site, DB diagram, they call it entity relationship diagrams. Um, If you read about entity relationship diagrams, they'll do it this way as well. So I, yes, kind of, you will see people do entity relationship diagrams like this. Um, you know, once you like have actual like tables, this does get a little more specific and um, like, a, like a more formal entity relationship diagram like explicitly naming the relationships, um, you know, being able to give like these, these different properties for attributes can be kind of useful. And if you think back to object-oriented programming, you could see how something like this could help you break your program into classes as well. Um, so short answer is, is yes, sort of. Got it. I was just thinking, like, like say you're like in a job and you're tasked with doing this for a project. You typically maybe like build something, and then you're gonna have probably meetings with other like stakeholders who are gonna align on, you know, the the relationship diagram that you built. It's it, right. Like it, it would something like a process like that would probably take place. Yes, it would. And realistically, as a junior engineer, that would probably take place prior to like you being assigned any work. Um. Okay. Yeah. Like normally the like mid-level or senior engineers are involved with that. Um, a lot of the times, honestly, the database already exists. Um, it's less common in junior software engineer interviews, but mid-level software engineer interviews, sort of a system design interview where they do ask a bit about database schema design isn't uncommon. Um, so yeah, in terms of a job. In a technical interview, will you be asked to draw an entity relationship diagram? No. Will you probably need to do it on a job? No. Will you need to be able to think conceptually about how the data is organized at a higher level? Yes. Um, you know, and and to to be honest, part of my hope with this and sort of the explicit design process was to get 
people thinking a little more about that that higher level abstraction before diving into tables and stuff. Um, like this, this stuff has a lot of overlap with like things with like product design as, as well. Um, but you know, if you think about your, let's say this is my personal project. I need to build the backend. I need to design my database. I need to write my endpoints. I need to create my front end pages. Um, a diagram like this can help me with that process because I can see, use this to figure out data models. I can use this to think about like, all right, the customer buys ice cream cones. We need a sales page. The employees need a timesheet page. Um, so th there can be a lot of value to, to this. And I would say that most software engineers either consciously or unconsciously think about stuff sort of at, at a higher level like this. And that's really the value of this tool, not like the diagram it, itself, but more like thinking a little more abstractly and then being able to break it down into like tables and SQL and stuff like that. Because like this diagram doesn't care if name is a varchar or a big int or whatever, right? This is this is about like the conceptual model of, of our data. Um, yeah, but, no, that makes sense. It kind of reminds me of creating like process flow charts back in the day. Kind of similar yeah. to that planning wise. Yeah, it's extremely similar. Um, and again, you all may find that this is less helpful, but I would at least like people to get some practice doing it to kind of like, like start thinking about stuff this way a, a little bit. And I think it will help, especially when you get to your personal projects and you have to like design your whole data model. And we'll have a couple other, um, like we have a, a guest speaker that talks about like product design and user stories. And there's a lot of similarity there as well. Um, what else is on people's minds or that would people like to see? We could write some SQL. We could talk about how to break this into a products table. Um, is, is there anything in, in particular that people would like to talk more about or, or dig into more? Okay, let me just quickly, I think, show one way to deal with products um, as opposed to, say, inventory. Um, I'm not a hundred percent how to represent it in the entity relationship diagram off the top of my head. Um, but, um, it might look something, you know, I think I'll just break my rule and kind of dive into showing it here, which is uh, essentially like, let's make a table named um, ice cream product types. And we'll give it a description. Actually, we'll give it a, a name. We'll give it a uh, dairy free as a Boolean. And actually, let me go ahead and, and do it here because I do think this is where this can be useful if I can get my diagram to, uh, if I can get my diagram to navigate. Um, Let's see here. 
Can people still see this okay? Cool. So the inventory, we're gonna kind of put this off to the side. Um, let's make an entity that's uh, ice cream flavors. And let's make an entity that's uh, own types. And this is not the best. There is probably a better way to do this. Um, but let's add a relationship here. And let's say that, like, right, a sale consists of these product types. And as I said, this this is uh if I there is probably a better way to do this and a better way to name these relationships, but I'm not going to get too caught up in that right now. Let's just say that um, our sale consists of ice cream flavors. And for simplicity, let's say that each sale uh, has one ice cream flavor, uh, but you know, um, let's see if I have this right actually. I think that's right. A sale can have many ice cream flavors. An ice cream flavor can be used in many sales, but each sale only has one. And let's do another consists of relationship for the cone types. Um, where are we? There it is. And let's just add an attribute like gluten free. It's optional, you know, and we'll just say the cone has like a type, like waffle cone, whatever. Um, and we could draw a relationship between the store and these as well. And that's where it's starting to get a little overkill, um, I, I think, and where there's probably a little bit of a better way to do this. Um, but the main thing I, I want to illustrate here is, you know, let's say flavor. And dairy-free as, as an optional value. And so if I'm doing it this way, I'm going to create two different tables. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, let me, in fact, rename this to ice cream flavors. And we've got name, and we've got dairy-free. And let's rename this to, or let's add a new table for cone types. And let's add a, a name or just type. And we'll do uh, gluten free and we'll make it Boolean. And for this, let's instead of name, let's just have flavor. And so now maybe what I want to do is now that I've got these, I can kind of modify this sales table. And instead of this huge description thing, I can have ice cream flavor ID and home type ID. And I can get rid of description. 
And now this is going to look something like this. And this is a little bit more like what we saw before with the with the um with the example from this morning. And and this is, I think, I should have maybe had the assignment move in this direction a little bit, which I think would have lined up with stuff more. And I want to just check in to see if this makes makes sense to folks and if folks have, have any questions. And let me just write some SQL to show what this looks like. And then I think that's probably a good stopping point for people to uh, write a little more code. And then we can you know, come back and, and share more code for uh, our retro at the end of the day. So just to kind of show what this stuff looks like, let's create a table of ice cream flavors. And uh, what did we say? Dairy, or we'll just say is dairy free Boolean. And we'll name this cone types. And this instead of flavor will be type. And instead of is dairy free, this will be is gluten free as a Boolean, right? And it, there, there is a way to specify there's a not null argument, right? I could do this because we always want our ice cream cone to have a type. We always want our ice cream flavor to have a type. If I don't specify that, we can always leave this empty. And in Postgres, uh, an empty column by default is null, and Postgres will evaluate null to false, I believe. So that works very nicely for these sort of optional Boolean properties of our uh, available ice cream flavors and, and, and cone types. And now we can make this table um, sales of ice cream cones. Uh, there we go. And uh, date of uh, date and ice cream flavor ID, um, integer references, ice cream flavors ID. Um, phone type ID references, phone types ID, and uh, actually get rid of that. Oh, or actually, I do want that. And then let's just say quantity, which is a little restrictive, right? I can only get multiples of the same kind of ice cream cone. Uh, so maybe this doesn't even make sense, and we just want an individual row for each sale. But that is, um, you know, to be determined. Uh, and you know what I didn't add in here, and what I could add in both of these is is cost. I I could add cost per unit, and same for ice cream flavors. I could add cost per unit because maybe the dairy free ice cream is more expensive than the non dairy free ice cream. Um, so I'll just add that cost per unit uh, integer. I'll put that here. And so then this does leave us with a design decision to make, which is, do I even want like a total cost here? And just assume that that calculation happens outside of my data schema and, you know, it, it's then inserted or do I not want a total cost? And then when I want to figure out the cost, I just look at this data and I'm like, all right, I have to get this and you know do a join to get cost per unit and and do this and multiply by quantity and basically construct a query or have some Python to do that. Um, 
there's not really one right answer. Um, and I'll just put put that here for for the sake of simplicity and and clarity. And and that's not uncommon to see in the real world either. Um, and so I think just to kind of like wrap this up, let me uh, show what this sort of looks like if we're looking at this in, in SQL. So, you know, sales of... Hey, uh, Adam, for online 38 total cost, um, do you mean total revenue? Uh, great question. No, because remember, like, actually, I'll just make this sales. And um, let me uh, just very quickly update this. Oh, and I should probably have store ID. I did forget that one, um, which is OK. We only have one store for now. Um, I think you'll see what I mean in, in just a moment. And let's actually bring this over here. So let's just say, you know, sale uh, 2023, 11, 14, right? Let's say that's vanilla. That's a waffle cone. There was just one. So at this point, it's basically the cost of this specific sale. And, you know, this has to be computed somewhere else and entered in the way that, that we've designed this. Our database is not going to calculate that for us. We could write a query to look at a sale and look at the cone type and get the, the cost and the flavor and the quantity and add it all up. And we'll see how to do more of that um, tomorrow to calculate the cost. But that, that doesn't happen here. So th this is basically derived elsewhere. Let's we'll just say the total cost is two. Say if we got two of these, total cost would be four. Um, so that's why I was sort of saying before, there's an argument to be made if you want total cost there or not. Does, does that make a little more sense in terms of what this total cost column represents? Like total cost per sale would be more explicit. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. I, I got a little mixed up. No, no worries. I know it's when you're designing these, remembering that the rows are like individual specific events and not like these whole aggregate things is a bit of a, that's a bit of a, a journey. Um, Okay, uh, we've got stand down in 30 minutes. So um, I do want to wrap up in a little bit to give people time to work or take a break. Uh, what questions do folks have or what, what things would you like me to dig into a bit more on this? If, if anything. Okay, cool. And, and was this review helpful sort of digging through this stuff? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. And it sounds like really this, this really should have been part one of our, our, our lessons before throwing the 32 flavors assignment at, at you guys. Is it sounds like is maybe like a demo of some schema design. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Cool. Okay. Um, awesome, everyone. Thank you very much.